Hey guys, KK here and thank you for joining me on another video on my channel. Before we get started, I want to thank everyone who has subscribed and liked my videos. It really goes a long way with me to create more videos, to share my techniques and workflow with you guys. Uh, regarding environment art and shader design. I'd also like to thank everyone in the Discord who are showing their support. It really goes a long way. In last week's video, we covered slope blending based off normals. Um, and what that does is it transitions two material layers uh, dependent on slope. As you can see in the background, these uh, what we did last week. If you've not seen that video, I'd recommend to go and watch it. Um, but in this video, it's an exciting video. Uh, it's about runtime virtual textures. And the aim of runtime virtual textures is to save on performance for your GPU when rendering out on your landscape. What it basically does is it stores the information of your material into a texture, i.e. a runtime texture, and then when needed, the GPU will grab that information from that texture instead of having to render your whole landscape out in one big shebang, no matter how far away you are. Um, so runtime virtual textures are very useful for very big open worlds, uh, games and environments alike. Um, so in this tutorial, I am going to show you how to set it up. If I have time towards the end of the tutorial, I'll also show how to blend this Quixel Nanite uh, uh, asset with the landscape so you get a, a nicer blend. Um, so we'll see how it goes. Uh, so I'm going to drop out of full screen mode and the first thing we need to check is that our runtime virtual textures are enabled in our project. So if you go to edit project settings and in the left hand side if you come down to rendering and then scroll down a little bit under virtual textures you'll see enable virtual texture support. You will need to enable this for it to work altogether. Um, if it's not enabled, that means you will have to restart your engine and compile the shaders. Um, but it shouldn't be too, it shouldn't take too long, depending on your PC or computer, whatever machine you're using. Uh, so pause the video, enable that, restart the engine, and I'll see you back here shortly. Once them render, uh, them renders, once them shaders are compiled, uh, we're ready to go. What we do need to do is to add. Um, volumes to our landscape for our virtual textures to read off and to our landscape so what we're going to do is we're going to start first by going into to my material landscape material landscape normal this is the material I was working on in the last video so we're going to right click and go to new folder and we put rvt dash landscape i think yeah uh, i'm going to open this up what I need now is the actual runtime textures. Uh, so if you right click in the content browser, go to textures and then runtime virtual textures. And then I'm going to put RVT color. We need a texture for color information and a texture for height information. I'm just going to duplicate that. Um, I'm going to go height like so. Uh, we need to change some information in here. Uh, so I double click on the color. Um, the first thing I want to change is this texture tile size. At the minute it's 256, I want to set that to 1K. So I'm just going to put a 10 in there and that'll make it 1K. Um, and then the virtual texture content, I want to change to YCOCG, base color, normal, roughness, and specular. Um, you can use the standard one. This is completely up to you, depending on your computer. The YCLCG is just a higher detail uh, and it also drains more performance. Uh, but that's completely up to you. Uh, nothing different, it's just performance based. And then we're going to come into our high texture and we're just going to change the texture content to the world height and save that. Uh, from here, we need to add the volumes. Uh, so we click the plus at the top left, come down to volumes and then down to runtime virtual texture volume. Just drag that in. You can't see it that much at the minute. Can't see it at all. Just press G on your keyboard. You may be able to see the white, uh, the orange outline on it. Uh, but we, that's the bounds of the virtual texture volume. And we need to encompass our landscape in this volume. Before we do that, I'm going to change the name. 
So if I just press F2 and put RVT color, right, so, and then I'm gonna left control and D to duplicate and press F2 and call this one, yes, you guessed it, height, like so. And to set the bounds of our thing, of our um, texture volume, we need to add the actual texture to it. So I've got the RVT color volume selected. I'm going to come down here and get my RVT color texture and drag it into there. And now you can see I can set the bounds of the landscape, but I need to align the actor first before I set the bounds. Now you can even use the drop down menu and just select your landscape and then set bounds. Or let's use the height for the other example. We're going to drag the height into the secondary volume created and or you could use this little ink drop thing here click on that and hit the landscape and it'll also bring it in there i'm going to set the bounds what i'm going to do is i'm going to fly right out here this is just a personal preference you do not have to do it um but as you can see at the bottom of the landscape and the bottom of the box is it's like bang on the right at the zero of the bottom of the landscape but i just want to give our volume a bit of a breather a breather a bit of breathing space so the way i'm going to do this i'm going to increase the z scale i do know this needs to be 10,000. right so as you can see the top of the orange outline moved up and then i'm just going to drag it down a little bit and that's just going to give the top and the bottom of the landscape more breathing room uh, i'm going to do the same for the color so in the uh, z axis of the scale we put 10,000. Keep in mind your landscape might be three times the size of mine this is only a 1k landscape because i'm testing out landscapes in gaia i'm used to world machine but i want to be able to gaia because it's from what i've heard of the reviews it's a lot better uh, so i'm just testing and that's where this landscape's from um, so i'm going to drag the color down a little bit like i say with your size of your bounds it might be different depending on the height and the scale of your landscape uh, with this RVT and height, I'm going to drag them into the landscape folder. Hold the mannequin, I'm going to click on my rock, press F on the keyboard, and it'll draw me back in. Let me slow the camera down again. Okay, so at the minute, our bounds and our runtime textures are all set up. Uh, what I need to do now is open my landscape material, uh, which is this one. Um, I'm going to double click that. Uh, as you can see, it doesn't look like much, but it's because I use functions in my workflow. All the information's inside the layer, like so. Uh, in earlier videos on my channel, I did create these layers and this uh, normal slope. Uh, so if you want to go check them out, be cool. Uh, but in this area here, I'm going to uh, put a bit of logic in here to uh, get our uh, landscape material communicating with our uh, landscape and bounds uh, so what we're going to do is get a runtime virtual texture output which is there so if you right click in the box and just type runtime and choose a runtime virtual texture output uh, for this i need this information so i need to get material attributes uh, you can use make material attributes mm. Maybe not make material attributes, but break material attributes. It's the same thing as a get material attributes, but in the get material attributes, you can select what outpins you want. So for this, I want to set my base color. Like so, my specular, uh, my roughness, my normal, and my world position offset. This is for later in the channel, the world position offset, which is in, in coherence with world height. Uh, so I'm gonna go base color into there, specular into there, roughness into there, normal into there. Uh, do you need some logic now for my world height? Um, what I need is a world align, uh, world position, my bad. And I need to get the Z, Z axes of my uh, material, of my world position, sorry. 
uh, which is the B of a component mask, like so. Pull that into world position. I'm also going to set a value of one in my opacity, like so. Um, and what I need to do now is create a runtime virtual texture sample for this output to communicate with. So I'll create that up here. Runtime uh, sample. Actually, let's delete that. I'm going to get a runtime sample parameter. And I'm going to call this RBT uh, landscape color. Like so. Um, and what I need to do now is set a material attribute. I'll set material attributes. And I need to, similar to the get material attributes, I'm going to go base color, uh, specular, roughness. Uh, we're going to get normal on our world position. Like so. Uh, we're going to drag these in here quickly. Um, roughness. Um, no. Let me think. Yeah. So I need a transform. And what I need to do is transform my material information, which is in tangent space, and to exit the, uh, the material, if you like, it needs to be in world space. And so we're going to put that in the normal. And so, and in here, in the texture, runtime virtual texture sample, I need to put my color texture in. And so I've got RBT, this is the color textures we created earlier. Put that in there, and in the group, I'm going to call this RBT options. Right, so, that's fine. Okay, yeah, that is it. So if you click apply, save um, as it stands now this is uh, runtime virtual textures enabled in our material and in the bounds and we've got our textures enabled what we need to do now is get our material to communicate with the bounds the volumes that were created around the landscape uh, which is done uh, what we need now is these virtual texture volumes to communicate with our landscape. Um, so if you click on your landscape itself in the outliner, and if you come down into the details panel, uh, you'll see this slot here, which is virtual textures. And what we need to do is put our uh, color information, our height information into the landscape so they all communicate. So if I hit the little plus add element icon, come to our textures, scroll down a bit, I'm going to add our colour in there, like so, and add our height into there, add our height into there, I'll add our height into there, there you go. Um, that be it. Uh, let's go to up. Let's go to our material. Have I set this up right? Because some of it's not right. Some of it don't feel right. I may be wrong here. Eh? Well, do you know what? Everything's fine in here, isn't it? Oh god, I've just made a silly mistake. As you can see, I've not even output this. <laughs> I'm here thinking to myself, and that's it, this is RVT set up, ha ha ha, we put our textures in there. I was wondering why the landscape wasn't reacting. Um, so that's why I've come back in here, I've just noticed we need to put this in there. Let's see how many samples we get. Just two. Uh, and then we hit apply. There you go. Once it goes pink, once your ball's pink like that, you find if you spotted that mistake then you know take the mickey in the comments below or in discord and apply that again and now there you go i'm getting the effects as you can see when i turn the camera 
You've seen these little grids pop up. That is the actual textures themselves holding the information. And the reason they're popping up for me is because of Distant Tiling, which was set up earlier in the, uh, in the YouTube channel, if you like. Um, but there is some logic I need to do in the materials, uh, material layers, and that'll clear all this up. But as it stands there, that is uh, Runtime Virtual Texture set up. Um, and now I share the complexity. Let's go to optimization view mode, shader complexity. Um, not much bloody worse, to be honest. Anyway, uh, so that's runtime virtual texture cell. Um, have I got time to do this? How long has this been? Yeah, go on, I'll do it. I'll do it. Uh, so if I hmm, let's create the logic in a function. So I'm going to right click, go to materials, material and functions. My naming convention, RVT Mesh Blend. Um, I was a bit concerned about doing this in this video, but I'm I'm going to test myself with it. Uh, it's been since I've not done any rehearsals on this video. I never do on my channel. Um, just trying to remember, I did do it in Unreal Engine Four. I'm just trying to remember. Um, but I do need an input. I know that because it's a function. Input function. Uh, I need to change this to a material attributes. Input put in a material input. I'm going to do this to make it a longish one. Uh, like so. Um, I do need the samples. Runtime. So it's just sample parameter. This is going to be RVT mesh color. So I'm not going to duplicate this. This is going to change from color to height. Like so, and I'm going to put this in RVT options. I could do it in the other material. I'm going to change that group to the RVT options. Um, I'm going to set material attributes. I need my base color, specular, roughness, normal, and my world position offset. Uh, we're just going to drag this. Am I doing this right? Yeah, I am, yeah. Right, specular, roughness, normal. Um, normal. Actually, I want to blend my normals, the normal of the mesh and the normal of uh, my materials in my landscape. So I'm going to blend. Yeah, I'll do that as well. Actually. So instead of just creating a mask, uh, let's get a blend material attributes. To blend this together. Yes. I'm blending with base color. Let's add our textures in there. Uh, we need our RVT color into our RVT color there and our height into here. Um, so they all match. Um, so I do my mask first, all the. Let's get a world position. Mask. Um, I want to subtract my world height. Subtract my world height to our world position. Um, I'm going to get material attributes. Yes, yes. Get material attributes, and I want my normal. Like so. And I want to, so I'm in world space from in normal. So I want to convert from world space, transform. I want to convert from world space to tangent space, like so. Um, I want 
to blend these two normals to go uh, uh, wait blend and go corrected normals so additional normal i may have to swap them to not 100 sure yet um, so I've blended the normals oh, then i want to blend them back again yeah so I'm going to loop these two actually, I'm going to loop that into B and this one into A. What I'm doing, I'm dragging my normals from my material attributes, I'm dragging the normals from the colour information of the... Um, one time virtual textures, and I'm going to blend them together, but I've had to transfer them back to tangent space, I've blended them together in my angle corrected normals, and then I want to blend them again. Now they're blended, I want to blend them again with my tangent normals, but based off a mask. I just don't know whereabouts in this mask I want to blend them. Uh, but this lurch going to go back in that normal up there. Um, this, is, this, is a, this is a big thing of why I need to just do a little bit of rehearsals. And I'm going to comment this normal. But don't worry guys, I've done it before, I'll, I'll work it out. 25, I'm gonna give this a blue actually. I'll do it as a normal. So, and these two are my base colour. Colour. And 25. Let's do some random colour. We'll pull this out a bit. Do this, I like everything to be uniform. Weird like that. If you've watched my previous videos, you certainly do know that. Uh, so that is my base colour, my normal. That's one too many there. Um, so yeah, I think. Um, let me think. No, that's going to come straight in here. Actually, is it? Um, we've got another subtract. Actually, let me duplicate that one. Then. This is going to be my RBT blend fade. Um, I'm going to need one for my height as well. So I'm going to put height in here. And I need to divide that from my work position, don't I? I think that's the right way around. It might not be right, I may have to swap them. I'm not 100% yet. Um, but I do need to. Yes. So this subtract does go into that loop. Uh, but the numbers are too big, I think. I may have to saturate it. Oh god, yeah. That is way too many. Uh, so. Hang on a minute. <laughs> it's kind of like I'm recording myself making the logic. It's meant to be a tutorial. Um, yeah, so what I've done, I've right click, I've started preview node, uh, previewing the node. As you can see, how bright that emissive is. That's just indicating to me how much. Um, it's not even the right way up. Let me do a one minus. Is it? Uh, let's see if this flips it. Yeah, so it's flipped it now, and but that's way too bright, so I'm going to use a saturate and just clamp it between one and zero, like so. There you go, there you go. It's quite a nice blend. Wait, now what am I thinking here? What am I thinking? Um, actually, I don't want to invert it. Yeah, I'm going to divide and then I can set the amount of blend of Let's just put that in there. Put it in there. Put that in there. That's right now. So if I scale a parameter, uh, RVT normal blend. 
so I'm going to give this a default value of 1.2 maybe. I'm not going to set any max and mins because this logic might not work. <laughs> but I've got a feel. I know the mask. The mask is easy. That's the easy part. It's just I needed to work out how to get this mask into it. I've got to stop previewing that now. Um, so this divide, I need to saturate this because uh, the numbers are skyrocketing. I'm going to set these to a default value of 20. Sorry if you are watching this tutorial, but like I say, I've not rehearsed this. I'm just trying to remember. I thought I remembered the logic from UE4. Um, well, I have basically. Uh, it's just about remembering how I did it, if you know what I mean. I'm going to add this. Um, what I need now is a vertex, normally world space, um, and I need another, well that's meant to be the Z axis. Um, I'm going to duplicate that because I need that one again. And I need to saturate this again. Right, okay, so now I've got my vertex in world space and I'm getting the Z component of it and I'm saturating that so we're not killing ourselves with big numbers. Now I want to flip them numbers and then I simply just drag this into a multiply. I need to set a multiply of one. Yeah, I'm going to multiply it by one because I've reversed it. And now it's going back on itself. And I think that is just your basic mask for runtime virtual textures. Uh, I need to add that together. Let's just check this. It's not too shabby, but I want to saturate that again. So, a little bit better. Um, and that should be enough. My alpha. Previewing it. Yep, it's still black, that's good. Okay, so what I've got there. And that's the alpha. Okay, so if you're still watching the video and not give up on me by now, let me just explain what I'm doing. So I'm getting my virtual texture base colour amount uh, parameters in there and I'm just basically transferring them to my set material attributes and then I'm blending the base color with my material attributes that are being imported into the function and down here I'm pulling my normals from my um, virtual texture and pulling my normals from my material and blending them just like we're blending the material and the base color here I'm also blending my normals uh, with these three nodes, uh, four nodes here, these four, and then I dragged out of my, I've divided, I've, I've subtracted my world height from uh, my world position from the world height, and then I've subtracted the fade. So this base basically means I can change the transition between the virtual texture and the mesh, and this is the height. This is just how high up the mesh, the blend goes. And then I've clamped it. Uh, there's also another node called clamp. Uh, basically, these two are the same thing. Uh, the only difference is you could set the minimum and height, uh, the minimum and maximum uh, value in that clamp, whereas in the saturate, it's just set to zero to one. And then I'm just using this basic mask. I'm a bit concerned about the vertex normals. I think there's another node I could use. And then I'm just getting my Z component, saturating it and flipping it and then multiplying it by one and then adding it to this to match this mask and I'm saturating it so it's just set at zero to one and that has gone into my alpha of my blend. Um, so this is the base color and normals blended together and then I blend both of them there and then I create this mask to blend them together 
and I've just pulled off this saturate uh, this subtract into the divide so I could create a blend for my normals as well and that goes into a lerp Whew, so that's that uh, I sincerely apologize about this uh, tutorial being this kind of way I did think to myself maybe a little bit arrogantly I could just come in here and do a mask but I did when I got into the function I thought I want to blend my normals as well and that's how you do it but this is extra tuition if you like I'll comment this RVT mask set this to 25 and set this to a little bit colour and then I'm outputting it out <coughs> pardon me um, so yeah so we're going to apply that I may have to come back in here and change that I'm not entirely sure just yet um, what I do need to do is get my master material I open the instance of your asset for Quixel um, at the bottom you have the parent material which is the master material and for some reason this is just using a default material and not a default fuzz I thought the nanite material used uh, fuzz blending uh, fuzz shading sorry uh, so this is my default what I need to do now is come into my landscape material normal RVT and I just need to drag this into here connect it up like so and click apply save it's like save guys uh, this is probably one of the strangest tutorials I've done but hopefully I think I've worked it out um, this is this probably does showcase 399 instructions that's very expensive it's a shade of past it's a vertex in it look look at that I may change that out yet uh, but let's see if it's worked first before we start changing and swapping things around and I think it has Yes, it has. As you can see, the blend is going up the rock now. It's not a snot. It's not a particularly nice blend. I think that is. Um, look at the blend on there. That blend is. I don't know. It seems alright. I just don't like it on the sides there. Uh, let's change the parameters. So I'm going to drag this out. Drag this down, go to the RVT. Uh, so the height, let's go zero. It's definitely blending. If I go 50, yeah, you can see it's blending downwards. Um, 20. It's, them ver it's that vertex, isn't it? The vertex normal. Um, what's that other node? There's another node you can use. Ooh, what is it? Bounds, bound, object, object bound, bound. Um, just plug that object bound into there, and I may want to Z component it again. We we'll click apply. Let's see what this does. I bet this is the strangest tutorial you've watched, but I bet this works, and it'll be the best tutorial as well. Arrogant bastard. Oh shit, I must well. Yes. yes, look at that. So object bound has worked. Uh, you are getting some texture stretching around the sides. Um, I mean, you could try playing them out, uh, but that's for a later video. Not too far in the future, actually, because I do want to add, try playing a projection to my master material. Um, but yeah, as that looks like it is blending okay. First thing I want to check is my normal blend. Let's put zero. Yes, they're blending. 50, yeah, they're blending alright. If I go one, my normal, you can see how dark it is. But if I increase this to a fairly large number, or 30, there you go. It's blending the normals of this material with um, with the mesh 
uh, which is successful in my eyes, especially where I couldn't remember the logic first. Uh, so the normal blend, let's set that to one. Yeah, it's very dark. So 20, 15, 30. 30 is a nice mark. Let's go 20, let's keep it at 20. Uh, what I am going to do is just test it on the top here, the quick. Yeah, that's a nice blend. Let's have a look if I set this to the fade to 30. Oh yeah. 50. Yeah, there you go. Now. That normal is a bit too high. Uh, so 10. 0. 10. Not the normal. Oh, I'm going to start it then. I think I need to append the normals. Let's put a zero on this normal. 50. Well, the normals are fine, it's not the normals. So that fade. Put 20. 1. 0. 20. There it is, there is the fade in. Okay, so I'm going to put that at 10. Uh, what this is now is just about tweaking with the parameters. Just try a component mask there. Let's see if this works because it might just set it all down, settle it all down if you like. Uh, I'm going to supply that then quick. Might not wear this, it might do. Might just give a better result if I, uh, if I clamped it. Oh gosh. Yeah. That's a better result. Much better result. Maybe some clamping it down to the Z offset. But what I've done there is I've saturated it. Bloody hell, it's a more component mass than ever. Uh, so I've got my logic. Oh gosh. Out. I've got my logic here. I might keep that there and try and work on that off camera. And then I'm just certifying that it's on the Z axis. And I try because it's texture stretching up the side. It's not helped that much, but it has helped a little bit. Um, but yeah, that is uh, trying to play in a projection. So, yeah, the blend is nice on the rocks. Still a bit of uh, artifacts here, but you'll always get that. Uh, that's a nice blend actually on the rocks. So, okay, um, so at the minute, I'm happy with that, blending, um, I mean it could be better, but I'm not going to get into that right now, uh, I'll save that. Um, so at the minute, this tutorial has been kind of off the top of my head, I've not rehearsed it for some reason, maybe I should start doing things like that. Uh, but we've worked the logic out, we've got the runtime virtual texture working on the landscape and we've actually got it blending with a nanite mesh. Uh, maybe that's why it's doing that on top there, because of the nanite. Yeah, it possibly is. Now I think about it, but yeah, we've blended the nanite mesh with the landscape. Obviously you could use a better mesh, it's nice down there. Nice blend. Yeah, that's a nice blend. It's, yeah, it's a nice blend, maybe the height, put the height to 20, that's 220, 20, 15, 10, that's the fade now, so if I put the fade on 2, there you go. Um, but yeah, no, I'm, I'm happy with that, I am actually happy with that. That's a nice blend actually, for saying it's a Quixel Nanite Mesh, I was a bit concerned about me uh, Vertex Normal blending. Uh, but it seems to have worked. Yeah, I like that. Um, so yeah, in the next video, we're going to sort out the distant tiling. We've tried playing a, a distant tiling with runtime virtual textures. And off camera this week, I'm going to try and work on this a bit better uh, to get a nicer result for you guys. And then in next week's uh, video, I will um, showcase what changes I've made. If I've made any, I might not make any because it's not that bad of a blend. 
to be honest. It really isn't that bad of a blend. From distance. It's not that bad. The only thing that I'll concern me is that it's stretching around the edge, uh, which is a lot more evident when you increase the height. Like so. Um, but no, overall, I'm happy with that. I hope you guys are, and I hope you have uh, learned something useful today. Like, this was probably nonsensical for me to do, uh, but it goes to show if you want to learn to create shaders, that you, it's always good to just experiment. Uh, with what nodes you're using and if you're ever in struggle come on discord and ask away i'm happy to help and or use the unreal documentation um so yeah i hope you found this useful and um yeah please subscribe and like the video and i'll see you next time thank you